So hello everyone, welcome back to Wiz Connect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome Anisha Dhillon today. Uh, Alicia is a Tableau and Alteryx consultant at Information Lab. She's also a Tableau featured author. And today she will talk about revisiting your dashboards in Tableau. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Alicia. Alicia, over to you. Thank you very much, Sagar. So hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and as I've already been introduced, um, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was a Tableau featured author in 2021. I've had two Viz of the Days, which is always a nice small recognition to have. Um, I actually studied something different before I went down this path. So prior to this role, I did criminal justice and criminology and then law. A lot of my early visualizations have been on topics such as hate crime and the ethnic disproportionality in the criminal justice system. So if you feel like having a scroll, you'll notice this. I thought that I'd add some non work related information too. I really enjoy keeping active. I'm currently trying to learn how to play tennis. I've never really played before, uh, but Wimbledon inspired me. I was also born in India and my first language is actually Punjabi and not English, despite growing up here. Um, so let's move on. So I first want to start with Iron Quest. And you might be wondering what an unusual topic. And actually, I was inspired by an IronQuest initiative run by Sarah Bartlett. If you don't know what IronQuest is, it's a data viz initiative with the IronViz scoring criteria in mind. It's really fun and genuinely a great way to learn and get feedback. So if you want to go and check this out, I highly recommend it. There's always a new initiative you can see in the screenshot here. Uh, nostalgic Games was one, there were Music First, and the one that I entered was on Revising. So a big shout out to Sarah and then CJ for also giving me feedback. So despite feeling like I just made a viz, that was all right, it ended up becoming viz of the day, which was actually a really nice achievement to have as a consequence of entering. But why should you work on something old? Before I share my thought process and improvements, I think it's important to acknowledge the benefits that this can have for you. It is a really great way for you to practice new or existing skills. You will have picked up a lot across your time learning Tableau. So if you've been using Tableau for a while, it's a great way to look back because your tablet public profile is a repository marking all that you have learned. For me, it was the fact that I have learned to use space in a more effective way and designed to enhance the findings of my data. And we'll look at this a bit more in my examples. If you are new to Tableau, often the hardest part is finding decent data to work with. A lot of dashboards are downloadable and you can reverse engineer and tailor a viz to your interpretation. So if that's the route that you want to go down just for a quick way to practice, please do make sure you give the appropriate credit to the person where possible. And in any case, if you're not sure, just ask them. They'd be more than happy to give you a hand. In fact, I went ahead and asked when I needed some data uh, and recommendations and I had really great responses. So please do. It's also definitely useful as something to measure growth and learning by. You'll notice that when I demo my changes, how differently I approached it and what I have learned since the initial approach. So firstly, I do have to stress, don't delete any of your old work. Even if you're new or you've been working with Tableau for a while and you look back at your profile and think, oh, this isn't that great. Keep it there. It's really, really valuable. Personally, I think it's a great way to demonstrate your growth in a data role. It shows how actively you're reflecting on your own work, which is a really great skill to have, as well as how much you have learned. You can certainly grow your portfolio and tablet, 
uh, and Tableau Public with, with this method. Maybe you lack inspiration as well. And as I said before, when I was going through a period, so I lacked a lot of time and still wanted to make something because everybody in the community was making amazing visualizations. And sometimes you feel like you want to be that person, but you can't. So I didn't have much inspiration. I didn't know where to begin. I did want to participate. Knowing I had the data and most of my charts as well as content built out made it really easy for me to pick up the data visualization project and just get stuck in. And despite the data prep being done, you can go the extra length to find supplementary data to your topic. See how you can improve on that too. That's always a really great way to build on a specific area if that's something that you want to focus on. So the last thing that I want to stress is that it allows you to focus on a specific area to improve on. So you can pick if it's design, storytelling, charts, context, or even supplementary data. Just don't go overboard in trying to improve everything at once. I find that when you do start out learning Tableau, you can get really excited. You want to present your data in several ways at once. And when you do reflect on that old work and take it to pick apart, you can learn to then summarize it and take your mini charts to improve on the storytelling. So overall, it's quick and really beneficial in many ways. So I highly recommend that you go away from this and have a go. A great way to learn Tableau, a great way to reflect too. So let's jump into some examples that I have for you. So this is just a screenshot. I've got all of the links open to show you. You can see uh, this visualization that I'm not very proud of, but it's still there on my Tableau public profile. So I'll just escape out of this. Oh. I think my screens have disconnected. Can you still see? Yes, Alicia, we can see, see your presentation. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, so this is the first visualization. I'll just turn it into full screen mode. So just to talk through a bit of my process, um, first of all, just to give some context on this, at the data school when you're in training you typically have a week where every single day you're given some data and by the end of the day you would have wanted to create a visualization out of it and the theme for our week was things related to climate change and global warming um, and hence one of the days we had exploring the changing forests the data set was really big i had to condense it down to enough to look at within the day. Uh, I was overwhelmed. You can probably see that from this visualization. I wanted to present a variety of charts with interactivity, but I don't think that quite followed through. The storytelling isn't very clear in this visualization. Everything's a bit out of place. So this was about exploring the changes in forest loss, tree cover loss and burned area between a certain period. And I wanted to see if this had a connection with rising global temperatures. The interactivity that I provided are through these two measures. Um, so we've got the parameter here for select a measure. I wanted to drive the entire visualization from tree cover loss, forest loss and burned area on the left hand side just taking a while to load and then I wanted to also allow the option to select a country to drill into but this feels really disconnected because this country parameter 
I'll just select it so you can see. This is only filtering this information below. It's not highlighting the country in the map. So these two are connected, but this space here doesn't make it very clear. I have these three line charts at the top that are almost like summary KPIs. I wanted to explore or I wanted the user to have a look at the visualization and see straight on to what tree cover loss, forest loss and burned area is looking like across the years. But again, it feels quite clunky. There's probably a bit too much in it. Then if I go to tree cover loss by region, I have a very simple map. I do have my instruction there. So I'm that seems to be OK. But again, this disconnect between the map and the information, because I do have the option to select a country. So that's still not clear. My bar chart feels very dense. Uh, I guess that might have been the point at the time. I wanted it green because it was about forests and and change. But looking at it now, it, it doesn't feel right. It feels a bit too too solid. And then finally, I've got my line charts on the right hand side. This is where I brought in supplementary data because whilst my data showed and told me a story, it's always really useful to go away from it and see, pick apart your findings. So I noticed that burned area was decreasing, but tree cover loss was increasing and as was forest loss. And as I built my charts, I thought, why might that be the case? So I explored different avenues and I did think, could this be to do with global temperatures? And it's really easy to find that data, bring it in and explore those questions. And that's what I did in this last chart here. So whilst there might not be a direct correlation, Sorry about this, my screen seems to keep disconnecting. So whilst there might not be a direct correlation to this, it's still a really useful view because you can see how the trends are moving. So this is my first attempt. Um, I made this back in 2020. And for the Iron Quest revising challenge, I went away and took a look at it again. And this is the after. So you can see already some of the takeaways from the first visualization that I spoke about. I felt like my storytelling wasn't very clear. There was no order. It didn't go from top to bottom. And when you're looking at storytelling, you want to start at your high level, give your big information up the top and then drill down into it. Often I like to break this down by the five W's. So what am I looking at? Where, how, why? But in this instance, I decided to start with those high level KPIs. I still wanted to maintain the filtering. So I've got burned area, forest loss and tree cover loss. And if I keep scrolling down, I've retained my map. I thought the map was quite easy to see an overall view from, but then I also decided to keep that information. So the information drilled down by country on the left-hand side of the map, because it made sense for it to fit together. You'll also notice that I've used, used a lot of space in between my charts. so. What I did before is cram everything together. It's not something I'm most pleased of, but I can reflect on it and see how I've approached my new visualization. And then I've got my bar chart. There's a slightly different approach here. Again, I mentioned before that this bar chart to me felt quite dense, it felt quite solid, the colour is quite harsh. 
and I improved it by softening the colour. I took a slightly different bar chart approach. Um, also, fun fact, bar charts are probably my favourite charts. I have visualisations that have multiple bar charts in one. I think they're really quick and easy. They are also a great way to an answer your questions without overcomplicating the visualisation. And this is just another interpretation on it. And my final section is on the correlation between global temperatures, because I still wanted to explore it some more. But what I've done here is I've taken the same chart, I've just tidied it up slightly, and again, I've supported it with a lot of space in between. So this order for me starts at a very high level. It explores it by country, where it makes sense. And then we get to see it by region, so it's drilling down even more. And finally, we end with our global temperature. So you will notice already that the two approaches I've taken are very different. And this is purely because I've taken the time to sit and reflect. I know this was made at a point where I had to get things done very quickly. Um, and I wanted to take the opportunity to revisit my viz when I had more time. I do want to show you one more example. So whilst I made this viz for IronQuest, I thought it would be good to try and do something else so you can see how quick and easy it is. So here is my first viz. Again, I'll put it into presentation mode. And again, there's a lot of clutter. There's a lot going on. It's not the worst visualization. I was really pleased with it at the time. So this visualization is on the impact of global warming on tornadoes in the US. And again, it was during the same period where we had to take data and make a visualization in a short space of time. I really like my heat map. To this day, this heat map is one of my favorites. It's a great example of a heat map. You can see the density, exactly when tornadoes are happening. It almost looks like a tornado in itself. You can see that it's happening between this period here, especially in the summer months, happens much less in December, um, happens during most of the day. So that almost like a diamond shape. And I wanted to retain this. I felt like this extra bit of context didn't quite make sense. The title was connected to the heat map. The extra context is nice to have, but again, like I said, a bit disconnected. My line chart below is really useful, but at the same time, I feel like it's stressing the same information that I already have. I'll just escape out of this. There we go. So this line chart is the same line chart that's present in both line charts below. It has some extra information that I've annotated on with the drill down. And again, this extra in information can be added elsewhere. So this follows the what, why, when storytelling lines. But I found that, again, the bar chart's quite thick. It's hard to read and understand. Uh, my charts, they're, they're doing the same thing in, in three different places. And it just made sense to tidy this up and tell it in the storytelling manner that I wanted to. So quite literally, I spent the weekend thinking, how can I make this better? In fact, it didn't take me too long because I have the charts here. I've done the research. I have the information. I just wanted to improve it in a way that made a bit more sense. So here is my after. 
and I've presented this in the way that is a bit like a newspaper. Um, I wanted to tell it in that way because I find that there's a lot of context which is very useful. So I'm working with information because whilst the charts are nice to have and whilst they do tell a story, it's always useful to supplement it. So I've kept my heat map. As I said, it's one of my favorite heat maps. I still have that focus on the eye of the storm of that tornado. I've gone the extra mile to add a bit of formatting. I've re referred to it as, as exhibit A. I've retained my headers. And I've split this into sections that make sense. So that second line chart I removed, but the annotation from it, which I thought was quite useful, I've included into this line chart. And now I can see what's happening side by side in terms of bringing supplementary data. I still have my map and I still have my bar chart, but I've just given it a lot more space to work with. So hopefully you can see exactly how useful it can be to reflect on your own work. I mean, I'm sure I can take this away and still keep improving it. Come to me next year, I might have more suggestions on how I can go some steps forward. Maybe I'll find more data, maybe Tornadoes will happen all the time, natural events happen all the time. And with the theme of this visualization, I could bring in more data and make comparisons if I wanted to. So that's the beauty of what we do and how we learn. And we can always carry on learning and improving in that way. So that's pretty much all I have for you. I wanted to demonstrate to you how useful and beneficial it can be to revisit your work. And I highly recommend that you go away from today if you lack inspiration, but you still want to build something. If you just want to have a go at improving a viz, if you want some data, it's really quick and easy to dig into your own work or even if you find a viz that's downloadable, like I said, ask for permission and I'm sure people will be kind enough to say, yes, here, have a go. I even have these resources that can help you out too. And if anything, you can contact me if you do have any questions for me. Now we have some time, so I'd be happy to take them. Otherwise, I am more than happy to respond to you if you want to get in contact. Hey Alicia. Hi. Yeah, sorry. I think there was some network problem over here. So thanks a lot for talking about revisiting your biz over here. And I think I we just have six minutes. So if you have any question for Alicia, just go ahead and put it in the chat. Happy to ask her. But I want to ask one thing from you, Alicia. You mentioned your background that you were into law before, but then you went ahead and started uh but, uh, started learning Tableau, right? Do, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and talk about that journey? How did you pivot? What will be your recommendation for someone who is just starting new and what they can learn from you? Yeah, of course. Um, it's quite an unusual journey. So a really good question to ask, actually. I studied criminal justice and criminology and you use a lot of data in general, um, whether it's qualitative, quantitative, and then in law as well, you're always problem solving. You're always asking questions. You're using cases that have occurred before. Then you're you're answering those questions in in a very argumentative manner, supported by evidence. 
Um, and all of those areas kind of combined with the work that I do now as a consultant, I still speak to clients, I, sp I still use those problem solving skills. And when I saw this job at the information lab, uh, where they offered the training, and I started to learn a bit of Tableau, and I built those initial visualizations on what I was passionate about. It was, like I said, hate crime, that one is still on my Tableau public. Um, the ethnic disproportionality in the criminal justice system, that one um, happened to, that one I wish I still have, it's on my old laptop, um, but that one happened to be deleted. Um, and that's what I started out with because actually when you're working with data, it doesn't matter where you're working with data from. It doesn't have to be KPIs. It doesn't have to be those numeric values that you'll find when you're working at companies. It could just be something that you're interested in and want to articulate. And Tableau was a great platform to do this on because this data is available to all. So in the UK, we've got gov.uk and this goes it's the same everywhere else and you'll notice that not many people know how to read it because it's just lots of tables lots of information so when i made those first few visualizations i thought wow this is amazing because something that's so complex to articulate i've been able to build a visualization to say well this is what's happening in this area in comparison to another area um, which is amazing because then you do get to see that the stark reality of it all from a visualization more than just a table. So that was the start of my data visualization journey. And again, I'm quite grateful that I have an organization that lets you pivot to your career in such a manner. Um, I don't think, in fact, I'm definite that whatever career that you're in, and if you are interested in data, whether it's the data that I worked with initially, or if it is KPIs and financial data, you can go into any aspect of it very easily. Thank you, Anisha, for that. Any, any question? We still have time. If you want to re unmute yourself, happy to do that and ask a question to Alicia. If not, I think, uh, Alicia, just your last thoughts, anything you want to go ahead and talk about, any recommendation you want to give everyone, how they can go ahead and build their muscles on data visualization and storytelling. Like I said, break it down, reflect, think on what, think about that one aspect that you might want to improve. And for me, it was really clear it was storytelling. The excitement of starting out was really mm. nice, but then to go away and hone those skills down. Awesome. Thank you. With that, thanks a lot, Alicia. It was an honor to have you on Visconnect. Thank you for sharing your journey, inspiring us with your great work. And please follow Alicia on Tableau Public, some great visualization she has created. And as I said before, still like an artist, right? Go ahead, learn from others, and that will help you to build the muscle in data visualization and storytelling. Thank you. Thank you, Saga. Perfect. With that, everyone.